was perhaps the mightiest empire in human history. At its peak, covered more than 5.9 million square kilometers, and was present on over three continents. But, well, every rise has a fall, and things weren't so different when it came to Rome. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to tell you about the fall of the Roman Empire. So let us begin. Trajan, who ruled from 98 to 117, governed a flourishing kingdom that spanned from Armenia to the Atlantic Ocean, giving the Roman Empire its largest geographical reach. An expanding population provided the empire with a vast number of trained, equipped, and disciplined warriors. It had a robust civil administration with efficient control over public finances based in booming cities. The literary elite saw theirs as the only worthy kind of civilization, bestowing ideological legitimacy and cultural unity on the empire based on a thorough understanding of Greek and Roman literature and eloquence. All in all, Rome was the biggest power in the world, and few could imagine standing against them. At this time, no one could have foreseen that such a powerful empire would just collapse, and this notion is true to an extent. Rome was too big to just end in a day. The decline took almost two centuries, and even then, one half of the Roman Empire continued as the Byzantium Empire. For the most populated regions around the Mediterranean, the climate began to deteriorate about the year 150. The Antonine Plague killed a lot of people between 165 and 180, making it difficult to fight Germanic invasions. Yet, the legions largely held or quickly re-established the empire's frontiers. During the third century, the empire faced several significant difficulties. The burgeoning Sassanid Empire defeated Roman field troops three times and remained a strong menace for decades. Other tragedies were civil wars, barbarian invasions, and the plague of Cyprian, which resulted in greater mass death from 250 onwards. The empire was split into Gallic Empire in the west from 260 to 274, a Palmyrene Empire in the east from 260 to 273, and a central Roman rump state for a short time. In 271, Rome abandoned the province of Dacia north of the Danube. Larger barbarian groups, which had developed better agriculture and expanded their populations, were more effective threats to the rhine danube boundary. In the late 2nd century, the average height of the people in the west fell precipitously. The population of northwestern Europe did not recover, although the Mediterranean areas recovered. The empire survived the three-century crisis by effectively orienting its economy toward defense, but this came at the cost of a more centralized and bureaucratic bureaucracy. The senatorial elite stopped entering the ranks of senior military commanders under Galinius, emperor from 253 to 268. Its usual members were uninterested in military duty and inept commanders. However, in 274, Aurelian unified the empire, and Diocletian and his successors reformed it from 284 onwards putting a greater focus on the military. However, the damage was done. A gap had been created between the Roman people and its leaders. This gap would later prove to be the undoing of the mighty empire. In 313, Constantine the Great declared Christianity to be officially tolerated. This was followed by an official search for a definition of Christian orthodoxy during the next few decades. Heterodox Christians were targeted in both official 
and private actions. The scorn that accompanied Christianity's sense of triumph after Constantine led to limited action against pagans who were mainly disregarded. His successors mostly followed in his footsteps, with Christianity being the religion of choice for every aspiring public officer. Cities lost their revenue from municipal taxes under Constantine and their endowments of property by Constantinus II, who reigned from 337 to 361. This caused even more problems as city councils began to lose strength. Constantine had also relocated the imperial capital to Byzantium in 324. Constantine established Franks on the Rhine's lower left bank. To hold their communities in check, they needed a line of fortifications, suggesting that Rome had lost practically all local control. Bandits started to rule territories such as Isauria, which were well within the empire under Constantius. The Germanian tribes grew in number and became increasingly dangerous. In the 300s, there was widespread instability and economic deterioration in Gaul, which had not fully recovered from the invasions of the 3rd century, possibly most notably in Armorica. After decades of pirate invasions, Armorica's villas were nearly all deserted by 350. Around 360, the usage of money in the local community disappeared. All these problems were compounded by corruption within the Roman officials and military. Julian, who reigned from 360 to 363, started a campaign against official corruption, allowing Gaul's tax demands to be cut to one-third of their prior sum while remaining compliant with all government standards. Julian was well known for his pro-pagan principles in civil law. Julian overturned the ban on sacrifices, reopened temples, and eliminated the Christians' special tax status and income advantages. He offered significant tax exemptions to the communities he preferred, but he treated those who stayed Christian with disdain. Julian fought battles against German invaders in Gaul. He embarked on a costly expedition against the Sasanian Persians, which resulted in loss and his own death. He marched on the Sassanid capital of Stesiphon, but on the advice of a Persian agent, he set fire to his boats and supplies to demonstrate his commitment to continuing operations. By destroying crops, the Sassanids initiated attrition warfare. He launched a ground retreat after becoming blocked off without supplies in enemy territory and he was gravely wounded during the Battle of Samara. Jovian, Julian's successor, was acclaimed by a disheartened army and began his brief reign from 363 to 364 while stranded in Mesopotamia without supplies. He had to give up parts of northern Mesopotamia, including the strategically vital citadel of Nisbis, to secure safe passage home. This castle has been a Roman stronghold since before the Nisbis Peace in 299. The brothers Valens, who reigned from 364 to 378, and Valentinian I, from 364 to 375, fought barbarian invasions on the western boundaries with vigor. They also attempted to lessen the burdens of taxes, which had increased steadily over the preceding 40 years. In his fourth year, Valens in the east cut the tax demand in half. Emperor Valentinian I met with German tribal chiefs from the Quadi in 375 CE. Previously, the Quadi had attacked Roman armies crossing the Danube River. They stated to the emperor that he had put up military barracks along the river in their land, establishing a barrier between them and the emperor. He broke into a terrible fit of fury, experienced an aneurysm, and died as a result of the blame they placed on him for their deeds. 
Three years later, in 378 CE, during the Battle of Adrianopoli on the Balkan Peninsula, a confederation of German tribes beat the Romans and murdered Emperor Valens. The fight was the consequence of a series of atrocities perpetrated by Roman officials against Germans. At this time, another important personality emerged. He was the person who would put the final dent in the Roman Empire. His name was Alaric, and he started his career as a Gothic soldier named Gainus before joining the Roman army. Under the Roman Emperor Theodosius, Alaric was a Roman ally who helped fight the Franks and other supporters of a would-be Roman usurper. Despite the fact that he lost tens of thousands of troops, he received little appreciation from Rome and disappointed the Roman army. The last of Constantine's lines was Theodosius I from 379 to 395. Theodosius I split the empire into east and west just before his death in 393 to be administered by his two sons, Arcadius and his younger brother Honorius, who was only 10 years old at the time. Flavius Stilicho, his guardian and army commander, was in charge of the west during his absence. However, the empire's two parts were at odds, a position exploited by Alaric, whose Visigoths had been utilized as allies, but had now forsaken their loyalty and rose in revolt after Theodosius' death. Alaric was able to gain leadership of the army in Illyricum, but this surrender was met with opposition and he was forced to flee. Alaric then attacked Italy itself, besieging Honorius in Milan in 402, to where the capital of the Western Roman Empire had been moved more than a century before. After being beaten twice by Stilicho, but being spared each time, Alaric was forced to flee and was persuaded to join a battle to recover Illyricum from the east. When the usurper Constantine III revolted in Britain in AD 407, the plan was abandoned and Arcadius died suddenly the following year. Honorius, who was now in the new capital of Ravenna, refused to meet Alaric's demand for reparations. Stilicho had been put to death, and Alaric marched on Rome in AD 410, the first time the Eternal City had been invaded in almost 800 years. Only after 5,000 pounds of gold, 30,000 pounds of silver, 4,000 silken tunics, 3,000 scarlet dyed skins, and 3,000 pounds of pepper were paid was the siege of Rome lifted. Statues were stripped of their ornaments, and if that wasn't enough, gold and silver statues were melted down. When additional talks for a homeland for the Goths fell through, Rome was besieged and ravaged once more, with the church's fathers scrambling to justify such a disaster. The year was 410, and the day was August 24. The same year, Alaric passed away. His kinsman, Athalf, led the Visigoths into southern Gaul two years later, and Honorius was forced to accept their monarchy at Toulouse in AD 418. Under the leadership of Genseric, the Vandals and other Germanic tribes who had crossed the frozen Rhine on the final day of 406 were now in Spain. Honorius allowed them to stay as well, despite the fact that he had little choice. Honorius died in 423, and Valentinian III, who was only a toddler at the time, took his place. The Vandals invaded North Africa, fought the Romans, and seized Carthage, which Genseric made his capital in 439. Invading Gaul in collaboration with the Vandals in 451, Attila and the Huns, who had already become so strong that they were paid an annual tribute by Rome, attacked Gaul. The Visigoths 
led by Flavius Aetius, the military leader of the West, defeated them in the Battle of Chalons. The death of Valentinian III in 455 provided a pretext for the Vandals to loot an undefended Rome for two weeks, stealing the treasures of the Temple of Peace and the gilded bronze tiles from the Temple of Jupiter. When the German leader Odoacer ousted the last Roman emperor of the West, Romulus Augustulus, in 476, the collapse of Rome was complete. After the collapse of the empire in 476, it was replaced by a succession of kingdoms governed by the Germans, whom the Romans detested so much. Even when it collapsed, Rome's Romanitas extended to the Germanic tribes. The Germanic kingdoms that developed in Western Europe after 476 CE, as well as the increasingly dominant Catholic Church, were modeled after the Roman Empire, which is no minor irony. In this way, Roman customs persisted even after the fall of Rome. The Roman Empire was not just a political union imposed by military might, but it was also a complex culture encompassing the Mediterranean basin and beyond. Manufacturing, trade, and architecture were all part of it, as were bronze secular literacy, written law, and a worldwide scientific and literary language. Much of these higher cultural traditions were lost to the Western barbarians, but their rebuilding in the Middle Ages by polities conscious of the Roman achievement laid the groundwork for Europe's eventual growth. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.